So my friend Susan at work says uh, that after the world has ended, there's only going to be two things that live, roaches and glitter. Now, that, is that glitter sans strippers or just straight glitter? Any type of glitter. If it's glitter, it will survive. So if the glitter is on something, will that thing survive as well? No, just the glitter. No. These are the questions people are asking. These are the things that people want to know. No, 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 no. No, it's not like you bury yourself in glitter and then go to uh, Hiroshima in the 1940s. No, no, no. I'm talking like... Hiroshima, 1940s, you're covered in glitter. Everything about you is obliterated. I think it was the 40. I think it was 48. It I think like it was 48. 48. It was 45, I think. Hold on, Steph's typing. She knows better than I do. I haven't taken history in 100 years. Probably since Hiroshima. Take a drink. Okay, you're right. 1945. Ah! It's, uh, it was... What the hell was 48 then? Was it the end of the war? Fuck if I, don't I thought know. it was because Hiroshima had, had, had kind of preceded the war almost immediately. I think I want to say maybe it was the Geneva Convention because I just looked that up recently. That might have been what was 48. Welcome to Animal Bites, World War II edition. All right, fine. I guess I'm doing the intro. Welcome to Animal Bites, where we tell you all the fun shit that Bud comes up with and only gives me an hour to prepare. So we're going to teach you about evolutionary anachronisms that I, myself, only learned about three hours ago. I'm River. I guess you're just alone. Back to easy, back to easy listening with Bud, your top ASMR channel. Oh, Talk oh, about back, yeah. animals and feces and all kinds of crazy shit in a really calm and relaxing voice. Here's our after dark episode. Welcome back, man. <laughs> well, welcome back, motherfucker. We're gonna paint some pretty little trees over here. <laughs> Anyway, all right, we're going on three, two, welcome back to Animal Bite, folks. God damn it, I'm trying to fucking talk. Holy shit, what the fuck? Okay, all right, we're going to go ahead and give that another shot. Back to Animal Bite, folks, where we tell you what Disney Channel, Animal Planet, and sacrificing your enemies and drinking their blood to gain their knowledge won't tell you. Unless your enemies are us and the knowledge is ours, then you will obtain that knowledge. However, this is a much easier alternative. I'm Bud, that's River, DA, and our live studio audience. Hello, live studio audience. <laughs> our one person. There's a horse in there. All right. Why? Oh, stop being so pathetic and pointing it out. All right. So today, today's going to be a bit of a dry episode, but we're going to make it nice and wet. And uh, we're going to be talking about evolutionary anachronism. <laughs> Are we going to make it moist? We're, we're going to make, make this episode it. moist? Hang on, let me just get real close to the mic. We're going to make it moist. <laughs> God, it's, it's just an hour and five I love minutes it. of us just going moist. 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 <laughs> Please God, that'll no. Be our, that'll be our Patreon, uh, our Patreon special. <laughs> yeah, our Patreon sadomasochist fun variety hour, definitely. Our Patreon or our OnlyFans, oh, come if on. it wasn't ruined by Bella Thorne. Oh, <laughs> and now that um, now that we've already had our one um, our one live stunt for the show. We're going to uh, we're going to delve into our current topic. We're going to be talking about evolutionary anachronisms, which is essentially something that it is a trait or feature or adaptation in an organism that once helped it out in its natural environment, but now is irrelevant due to either continental drift or other organisms going extinct. 
and there is a difference between evolutionary anachronisms and things like vestigial adaptations, and I will leave River to talk about that. What now? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> fucking now. <laughs> that was a smooth segue, by the way. That was incredible. Okay. I mean, that is like lubed right up. All right. That was beautiful. All right. So basically vestigial, um, vestigial basically means it's a, it, it's a part that's unneeded. It's a part that evolved because it was needed at one point, but now it's not. Now, uh, I know a lot of you people don't think that, uh, animals such as blue whales or manatees have back legs per se, but dead ass, if you look at the skeleton, uh, and I'll, if you look at the skeleton of a manatee, I think she might have also hit her head on the way down, too. All right. So basically, with the skeleton of a manatee, um, you're going to see, like, these little tiny, that is a terrible image, but you're basically going to see these little tiny back legs. Now, where'd you go? With, uh... Um, with back legs, uh, they, a lot of sea mammals actually used to crawl on land. They started from the sea, they went back on land, and then said, well, fuck this shit, and then they went back into the sea. So you got your, um, you got your mammals, such as your dolphins, your whales, your manatees, your, uh, your sea lions. Uh, a lot you of, also, uh, they love sea snakes. Sea snakes. Um, they basically crawled on land, said, fuck this shit, and crawled out. Um, so essentially, uh... <laughs> So the Irish goodbye of evolution. While we're still in the middle the of a Midwestern, shit. Well, we're still in the middle of a Midwestern goodbye. Uh, we like to swim, but or we like to swim, but we still like to dry off at the end of the day. All right. So basically, what's really cool about uh, anachronisms, or sorry, not anach um vestigial is that humans you yourself actually have um vestigial parts which means you have parts in your body that are so goddamn useless some of them are even trying to kill you like for example your appendix the appendix yeah yes. the appendix the appendix how many of you guys have had like appendicitis because if you didn't get that thing taken out it would have actually killed you um now it's i feel actually, like that's what's that killing me today. I, I, I'm just imagining our chat, our at home, cozy in their in their little snuggies in front of their computers, listening to us, raising their hand. <laughs> I got my. I'm imagining computer. all of the fans listening right now, just raising their hand. What, all you, ten of them. You, what you don't you don't raise your all hand ten of them. <laughs> all ten of them. You don't raise your hand when you listen to a podcast. <laughs> Okay. No. So but you don't you don't follow along. In case you're wondering what the hell an appendix is, because you've been living under a rock at your twelve, um, it's a small pouch that's connected to your uh, long. I don't think this is a podcast. <laughs> we're an adult only podcast. Trust me, we're gonna get a lot of twelve year old fans. I promise you. Just look at Vivzy Pop. All right. The small pouch attached to your large intestine and at at the junction of the small intestine, it no longer aids in digestion would it like how it used to it used to be able to um aid in digestion um and none of the one in 20 people who have one removed seem to miss it in plant eating ver vertebrates um it actually remains part of the digestive system and a study in 2009 found that the human appendix actually might be useful serving as an important storehouse for beneficial bacteria which can't wait for a ch can't wait for a, ch uh, a chance case of diarrhea so they can cut it out of you so basically, that's... What now, that raises a good question. What's up? Do vegans need their appendix more? That is actually a good question. I don't know. That is... well. My, I mean, that's not something we're really going to delve into, but well, like... My roommate's, my roommate's a vegetarian, so I'll ask her if she, she... I mean, she's had, like, a lot of surgery, so I'll ask her if appendicitis is, was one of them. But, um... Just ask her, hey, do you need your appendix? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Can I borrow it? Yeah. I mean, I just want to take it out of the town. Already, hey, man, are you using I your appendix, appendix right now? All right, so um, 
what's also inter what's also interesting about this is um what's also interesting about this is that I'm gonna kind of go into a, like a really weird side story, but I used to be I used to be very I used to be a very anti science Christian, believe it or not. Like I used to be like you know evolution doesn't exist. It's a you know it's just something stupid and you know um until I started learning animal science, and I was like, oh, dude, evolution's fucking cool. Matter of fact, I actually saw, um, when I was, back when I, like, you know, absolutely evolution does not exist, I actually saw instances of, uh, ev of, um, uh, why am I blinking out it all of a sudden? The no longer, uh, vestigial, uh, vestigials. I saw vestigials, like your appendix, your tailbone, male nipples. Vestigial, you mean? Vestigial. 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 <laughs> vestigial. Uh, you, wouldn't uh, you wouldn't believe it, man. She showed me her vestigial. Well, the, oh, the, the vestigial I, is I, an I adjective, the by the way. Vestigial. Two episodes ago. But, um... Anywho, I actually took that as proof that evolution didn't exist, because if evolution actually existed, then why do we still have our, our appendix? Why do we still have our tailbone? Why do we still have, why do males still have nipples? Which, yes, the tailbone is, uh, you don't have a tail. For pleasure. Apes do not have tails, and humans are apes, despite what I may have told you about 20 years ago. Um, apes do not have tails. Yes, Steph is, yeah, Steph's correct. Yeah, I used to say that. Darwin was a crackpot. Um, apes did not, ha or apes do not have tails, hmm. and yet they still have tail bones. Um, same with humans, because, you know, humans are technically primate primates. Um, but if you go far back enough into your family tree, your fucking ancestors had tails, lucky bastards. Um, a lot of mammals find their tails that are use for, useful for balance, but when humans learn how to walk on two legs, they it just became useless. It's kind of like bears that have those really short, short, really short tails. They don't need their tails for balance. Um, and of course, everybody's favorite. No, they have them. They have them as windshield wipers for uh, for sweeping, no. uh, swatting the poop gross. off. Yeah, that's that. No, that's a poop. That or that's a hippo. That's how hippos attract mates. I am dead serious. It's kind of gross, but like, definitely Google it. Yeah. Um, hippos attract mates by pooping on themselves and then using their tail as a windshield wiper, and it, it scatters all over the place. And uh, the other hippos are all like, mm, oh, some marking their territory. baby, that's hot. Oh, God, there's just splatters everywhere. Mm, fuck me. Um, and then, of course, everyone's favorite male nipples. Wow. Male nipples. Oh, I can tell you, that's my favorite. Mm, huh. Mm -hmm. Male, okay. So, I love this fact. This is actually my favorite one. fact, and when people ask me all the time, I love, I love answering it. Males have nipples because when you're in, when you're, like, early in the womb, you essentially start out as female. You have the XX chromosome, and when you become a male one of the tails of the uh, X X's in your chromosomes fall off and it becomes an X Y chromosome. And that's why you still have your nipples. And you're suddenly worth, and you're suddenly worth an entire dollar. I mean, that's totally science. <laughs> what? I'll see myself out. I'll see, my, I'll see myself <laughs> out. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, now my personal favorite, oh, or my oh, other oh. favorite, uh, when it comes to vestigial, vis, vis, whatever the fuck it's called, is your wisdom teeth. <laughs> my favorite thing that I can't pronounce. <laughs> yes, that totally makes sense. It took me, I, a, I month, it took me a month to remember broke. the word anachronism. Anachronism. You finally remembered it. Holy shit. Anachronism. I, I, I kept calling it anachronism. Heavily. I kept saying it's not. No, no, it wasn't. Hey, uh, bud, when are we going to do the podcast on, uh, evolutionary, it's not convergent, evolution, Uh, it's... fucking, uh... <laughs> and every time it'd have to every be Every time I call it convergent evolution, which that'll be for another episode, because convergent every... evolution is fucking Convert... cool. All right. Convergent Seriously. evolution, evolutionary anarchy, evolution acrocanthosaurus. Dude. 
we can I keep never, going. Like, I never knew this. So thing, like but evolution is fucking cool. All right. So anywho, your wisdom teeth. One of the most um, badass dinosaurs. Your wisdom teeth. Uh, there was probably it was actually probably used to uh grind up your. Or it was probably used to grind up your uh your leafy vegetables back when you walked on all fours, and it was probably uh so last Monday. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, and it was probably... Joke's on you. I still walk on all fours. I crab walk places. Are you kidding me? I still that's wanna, the more I still... That's the more efficient way to do things. It's like that fucking scene from Exorcism. The only... <laughs> <laughs> People get out of your way. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, the only way to go up the stairs is on all fours. Um... So anywho, uh, and then it, this it, it, is a great it, it was an enact. Yeah, it was a, a vestige. It was left over from when our jaws actually went <laughs> further back. Um. So like before teeth brushing, a young adult would have lost many or most of their teeth, but the incoming wisdom teeth kind of like you know it it, it helped save the day. My wisdom teeth hate me because they came in when I was 31, and... Your backup. What? My wisdom Your backup teeth. teeth. Yeah. My, wis or my wisdom teeth came in when like I was 31, shark. and I would literally pushing my other teeth out. I am literally missing two teeth because of my goddamn win well, wisdom teeth. Oh, shit. Okay, uh, I would like to put forth a formal motion for this episode to be called this this evolutionary <laughs> leftovers <laughs> agreed i second it two uh, two two versus one sorry <laughs> we have the floor <laughs> we have the floor <laughs> evolutionary and that and that don't hurt yourself kid <laughs> Ve it's gonna be vez vesti evolutionary <laughs> leftovers. Here, I'll even type it out for you. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steph, tell us how you really feel. How many? How many drinks are you in? <laughs> All right. Bud, you want to? Okay, so All right. basically, so the difference uh... between the leftovers and uh, an an anac anachronisms, anachronisms is the fact that Acri with anachronisms, anachronisms, an God damn it, Bud! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> he has no what connection to your mouth. I don't know what your problem is. Best, besto, edgy, evolutionary love. Yeah. All right. Do you want to explain the difference between uh, evolutionary leftovers and Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Apocalypse. <laughs> so, um, I'm an animal scientist. I thought this was supposed to be a learning channel. We're not learning shit. <laughs> Welcome to Animal Bites, where you don't learn shit. shit. <laughs> because River can't pronounce big words. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't fucking pronounce things and spend like two hours talking about the vestigial parts of the human body. <laughs> okay. I mean, right. vestigial. Wait, there's parts of Say that five that times so fast. Next time it's it's kind of says, vestigial, vestigial, vestigial. Next time easy. I mean, next time what are you doing you later? Uh. Next time someone calls you useless, just remember you're only partly useless. That's why you. I mean, kidneys are worth like thirty thousand on the exactly. black market. That's why I said partly useless. I think you could. I think you could take the appendix and sell it off as like a liver or kidney, and then trick someone and and get the some money out of it. But like morally, like that's the not right. Like a, a trick someone? Where are you selling the appendix know, out behind like the shop and save? Yeah, and I mean, someone's gonna try to buy it and be like, "Oh man, I, I, I'd like to buy." Oh, this. dude, I totally got this deal on this appendix. This guy gave it to me in an alley. It was crazy. I'm sorry. Did it's you totally sell a deal. Did you sell it to the guy that was outside my window last podcast? 
<laughs> is he still out there? No. Is he still out there? All right, for everybody he's listening, he's still out that, there asking for a mic's every, hard. For everybody listening, if you listen to the last <laughs> podcast, I kind of she obviously a, survived. I one, I survived. Two, there was that kid that was hanging outside my window. He was still hanging out. He asked me out on a date. He was still hanging outside my window after the podcast, and we literally walked oh, in yeah, the parking lot. Poke. And he said. Yeah, I'm totally in a blood. I love blood. And my first thought was, oh, God, I'm going to die. And he's just like, yeah, I want to study blood. And I'm just like, okay. And he's like, like, the fact that if you drink snake blood, you can become immune to its, like, venom. And I'm like, oh, gee, look at the time. And he's like. <laughs> for legal reasons, that is not true. <laughs> yeah. For, oh, God, no, no, no. But, like, he, uh, and then he, I don't know how we got on this time. Uh, subject, but we were talking about wombats, and he's like, "Oh, I've never heard of a wombat." Like, and I'm like, "Yeah, it's a it's a marsupial that lives underground in Australia." And he's like, "I thought bats live in caves." And I'm like, "Oh, gee, look at the time." <laughs> so I gave him a mic start and kicked him out of my house. <laughs> 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 Mike's hard. Is that what the kids is is that what the kids are calling it these days? A Mike's hard? I mean, if you I mean, if it's the alcoholic drink, then yes, that's what I'm drinking right now. Mm. All right. I think he's making a sexual innuendo there, I my know friend. He is. I'm trying to ignore burr, it. Burr, burr, burr. All right. You're not doing a fantastic job at it. Just like we're not doing a fantastic job at staying on topic. So we're going to continue talking about that. <laughs> this has become a vestigial conversation. Say it with me. Oh. Vestigial. Ooh. Vestigial. It's so meta. We're breaking the fourth wall. It's like we're talking to you. Yes, you sitting there in the chair or walking home from work. With your headphones in, we're talking to you. Anyway, we're going to tell you about evolutionary anachronism. So we just got explained to what vestigial means. And so evolutionary anachronisms are not the same thing. They're something that is still present in its full sense. Unlike vestigial, where um, they're on their way out the door, so to speak. They're currently being... Um, eroded evolved. they're eroded. genetically becoming eroded would that be the yeah. word for it Gen evolutionarily eroded is a good way to describe vestigial things but um uh, uh, anachronisms are not eroded they're still standing strong like a mountain and so uh one of <clears> the <throat> craziest examples and the the oldest example I can think of of an evolutionary anachronism, and it might not be the oldest, but certainly cool as hell because it involves fucking dinosaurs, and that's what the people love, so you gotta give them what they love. So uh, we're gonna be talking about the Jinko leaf, and I think most folks have at least heard of that before. Is it uh, it's or a Jinko? Jinko, Jinko, I have never been sure how to print. Are we talking about the pants? No, not, like, no, not Gene or not Junko. I'm just not gonna Junko, go with Jinko because like ever. we're talking about right. Uh, I mean, they got dragons on the ass pocket. That's like Jinko. Welcome to Jinko. We make pet plants. <laughs> we make ass dragons. dragons. Ass dragons. <laughs> ass dragons is also a great name for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, keep going. This is so, a terrible uh, dumpster Jinko, fire. It is a genus, a genus of plants that have been around since the Jurassic era, and miraculously, even though they evolved alongside dinosaurs and early mammals, and they evolved a seed dispersal system, uh, which is a way of plants to uh, further their population and spread out from one another via using animals or the elements and such. Uh, their seed dispersal system involved dinosaurs, which is fucking cool. And um, so way back in the Jurassic era, when Jinko trees were first showing up, their fruits, after falling on the ground or picked off of the trees by dinosaurs, would be 
eaten and then carried on and dropped in the animal's dropping somewhere else. And with that nice little packet of nutrients, the tree would start anew, and uh, all of a sudden you have a new tree. And so this worked great with dinosaurs who just ate it whole and then digested the pulp of the fruit and then left the seed. However, when the dinosaurs uh, bit the bucket uh, 65 million years ago, roughly, the Jinko tree was uh, missing their seed dispersal system. Ooh. And as time has gone on, they figured out ways of uh, still surviving through the use of mammals. However, they're clearly not designed to be dispersed by mammals, as mammals usually just tear through the entirety of the fruit and mess up the seeds pretty bad as well. But they're... they're Bud, you're breaking up. Bud? Producing and making more of themselves is now kind of up to date. Which, oh darn it. I still think it's pretty cool, because that's something that a dinosaur ate and shit out. out. And um, that's going to be kind of a... It's going to be kind of a common theme in this episode, talking Mm -hmm. about seed dispersal systems from various plants, because uh, around the world, you still have a lot of plants that are present. However, they have either seed dispersal adaptations or defense adaptations from animals that have gone extinct, especially from the most recent large extinction during the Pleistocene. Uh, A lot of large mammals like elephants and rhinos and giant ground sloths and everything along those lines, and especially in places like North America and Australia, have still have these evolutionary anachronism-based plants that were once relying on, you know, wombats the size of rhinos and woolly mammoths and Colombian mammoths and sloths large enough to turn over a car. Now they're just trying not to fall out of this fucking tree. Now they're just trying not to fucking die. Um, all right, so basically what Bud is talking about, uh, those giant animals that lived, um, you know, that lived way back when, they're called megafauna. And we still have megafauna today, just, like, barely even a percentage. That is Barely even a percentage of what, what we used to have, but we, uh, so it'd be like elephants, giraffes, those are considered megafauna. Um, whales, megafauna. But, again, it would, it's yeah. like a percentage of, of what used to be. Like, back then there were mosquitoes as big as pigeons, mostly because, uh, that was actually during the Carboniferous period, <laughs> I want to say. Get Jumanji shit out of here. That's. That's some carboniferous motherfucker. Yeah, that's some carboniferous shit. Uh, basically, what happened was, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, bud, but the oxygen levels on Earth back then were so high that uh, that's pretty much what caused <laughs> everything to grow, like, massive. Precisely. Yeah. And that is based off of, and a lot of the arthropods got huge back then because, uh, their breathing system is a lot more passive than our superior tetrapod vertebrate breathing systems in which we controlled the air in our bodies. Twins. Instead, they just let their let the air go through them like uh, some pansy shit. Unless you're a snow leopard. Fuck it, that sucks. Sounds like a lot of projecting. Unless you're a snow leopard and the air just goes straight from your nose to your lungs without any, like, curves, turns, or, you know, detours. No, that's still an active breathing system. Like, uh, with a lot of arthropods, they just have holes for oxygen to go into, supply them with oxygen, and then for the air to leave. Like, they don't actively control the air. Yeah. Which makes it weak. Um, so but has a superiority complex over arthropods. We'll find out more next episode of Animal Rights. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, all right. So, what about what yeah. about <laughs> what about an, uh, anachronisms, anachronisms, anachronisms uh, on, on islands? Like, for example, no, you had it right. What's that? First time. What's that? You had it right the first time. Anachronisms. There we go. Are you sure it's not anachronism? Anachronism. There's no other. There's only one S in that entire word. Anachronism. All right, fine. Anachronism. So, if I, give me fucking like a uh, lit up on uh, the comments, like how you did on the uh, the fucking the. I forgot. I forgot what the mouse's name was, but uh, apparently we pronounced it wrong the entire fucking podcast. Um. But anywho, uh, so basically, like on the islands, like. Um, oh, the uh, the marsupial. Oh my god! Yes. Explain that. So. Without breaking up. Um, Google says oh, anachronism. By the way. It is an anachronism? anachronism. Really? It, Google says anachronism. Yeah. I've been saying it wrong. Okay. Way to I, go. I'm still going to give you shit about it, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> Every biologist listening to this show has immediately unsubscribed. All 13 of them. <laughs> I don't think biologists listen or to this show. they've fallen over with head trauma or a aneurysm, because we all know what causes aneurysms. No, I think they're actually just planning on killing us. Well, they have to visit, like, like two different states. Mm. Yeah, but Not really. Know. I mean, you could press a button from middle America and pretty much send something to kill people anywhere. I mean, the Yellowstone I volcano is kind the of... End, baby. Up, so. Oh, you could hire a hitman, too. So, Very uh, true. islands. Hire Ana- uh, All right, anachronisms anyway. on so, islands. Anachronisms on islands, and I'm mostly going to be talking about mm-hmm. Madagascar for this because Madagascar recently had a large, uh, large animal extinction uh, where they lost most of pretty much the entirety of their large animals on the island, and it was fairly recent too. Animals like the elephant birds and giant lemurs and hippopotamuses that were once present on the island are now gone, and so. In that, re- in the wake of that, ecolo- or evolutionarily speaking, recent event, uh, a lot of the organisms that have adapted to live alongside said organisms are still displaying adaptations that would have helped them with, say, elephant birds or giant lemurs or hippos. And we'll get to that as we go on in a little bit. And then, uh, but jumping from that, we'll talk about more megafauna extinctions. And this time we're going to be talking about North America, where North America's megafauna is mostly gone except for moose. Moose? Bud? Moose, that samples, and giant bears, and a whole other plethora of terrifyingly large animals. And so, as these animals... What? Not really megafauna, but yeah. Now, a lot of people are actually super surprised to know. So, as... Oh, sorry. What were you saying? I said a lot of people are actually surprised to know about, like, what type of animals used to live here in America because most of the animals that lived here in America people associate with either Africa or um uh the Middle East like for example yeah, yeah like for example uh camels camels actually came from North America they crossed the uh the Bering Strait land bridge and they ended up in uh they ended uh, they ended up in uh the Middle East because of humans they figured that camels actually made better um, mounts on sand than horses did. Camels actually uh, originated here in North America. Um, 
Horses, on the other hand, originated. And camels used to be fucking huge. Um, oh, and then people are also surprised to know that terror birds actually migrated from South uh, South America when the Panama um, when the Panama or when Panama connected with that land bridge. Most of the South American creature, or not most, but like the um, South American uh, flora and fauna, actually migrated its way up to North America. And the terror bird uh, was one of those things. And they said that the terror bird um, migrating up north was actually um, I, if I remember correctly, it was the cause of its own extinction because then it had to uh, compete with like dire wolves and like other large carnivores. It's never, it's and never came across. Bears. Them. Yeah. And cats. So pretty much the terror bird migrating caused its own extinction. Um, and then. Congratulations. People- you played yourself. You played yourself. Uh, and then we, uh, there were uh, American lions, American cheetahs. There was that giant ass camel. We'll get to that one in a little. Um, but uh, no, the cheetahs are actually interesting because that's another thing we wanted to talk about. Camels, the size of humanitarian oh. camel that are already. Hello. What? Oh, uh, okay, there we go. Oh. I was gonna say, and, like, modern-sized camels are already pretty much on the list of do not fuck with. Oh, yeah. These oh. prehistoric camels are... They're, they, I think they would classify as a small kaiju. <laughs> where's, <laughs> where's Layla? Um, Layla's all about the kaiju <laughs> life. Um, so, like, with, uh, with American cheetahs, it's interesting because... They were very fast. They were actually near, not as fast as the African cheetah, but pretty up there. Uh, now, not a lot of people know that in America we have an animal called a pronghorn. Let's pull up the pronghorn on my computer. American pronghorn. You don't even need to type in American well, pronghorn. There's only one pronghorn. Well, yeah, but still. Pronghorn. So, anywho, this is a pronghorn. Pronghorns are... Fun fact, uh, while we're talking about... Pronghorns are uh, the second... These guys. They are the only member of their family left. And they're the second fastest animal in the world next to the cheetah. Uh, but when it comes to endurance, they are the, they're the, uh, they're, they are the fastest. If a pronghorn and a cheetah had a 100 meter dash, the cheetah would win. If the pronghorn, ha- or if the pronghorn and a cheetah had a marathon race, the pronghorn would win. Am I distorted and echoing? Because I was going to talk about the fact that pronghorns are the only surviving member of their family. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, and that because they're actually kind of badass. They're really fucking cool, though. Hello. I think we lost River. No, I'm here. She's bouncing oh. around in uh, Cyberland. Can you hear me? There we go. Okay. Slightly. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with my. All right. I don't know what's going on with my sound system. So back to the topic you had a boner for. What pronghorns? Or mega Because, like, you jump halfway across the episode to get to it. I fucking love American megafauna. I love that topic. I mean, pronghorns no, really prong. They, they, they do it for me. <laughs> um, it's pronghorns, not peghorns. All right. Um, oof. So, basically, with the pronghorns. I- With the pronghorns, like I said, they're the second fastest animal in the world next to the cheetah. Now, pronghorns used to get chased down by American cheetahs. Um, The thing is, is that pronghorns literally do not need to be that fast in America. The only animal that can, like, prey on, that can actively prey on them would be, like, mountain lions and bears. But even the mountain lion would have to get 
like ambush distance in order to catch one because as soon as it takes off it's it's gone you're not going to catch up to it it's like chasing a speeding car on foot um but basically uh with pronghorns they they uh they evolved to be so fast but when the american cheetahs went extinct god damn it one of these days i'm gonna get an actual microphone (laughs) Anyway, back on to North American megafauna as they were moving through animals like mammoths and giant camels and bison when there were still a bunch more of them. As they were moving through North America, they'd be stirring up the grass and sending insects flying. And a little friend called the, well now named the cowbird, which is named after following herds of cows as they go through the pasture and churn up insects and they pick off the insects as they fly away. These guys have this... uh, this sort of adaptation, this behavior of following herds of moving animals through the grasslands, because they used to practice the same thing with bison and mammoths and giant camels and whatever was moving through. We lost you. We lost you. Well, that was fucking weird. What was the last thing y'all heard? Camels and um, camels. the uh, yes, and it was there. stirring up. It was the birds were eating the bugs that were stirred up by the elephants and the bison. Yep, and now they follow cows uh, because they had that sort of behavior locked in. That's it for that's it for cowbirds. Um, now on to the conversation that started this episode. Which is the humble avocado. So all you millennials with your avocado toasts, if it wasn't for avocados, y'all be owning a starter home by now. If it wasn't for giant fucking ground sloths, you wouldn't have avocado toast. So the next time you sit down and pay $30 for a slice of bread with some fruit on top of it, Thank a giant ground sloth. Uh, sometimes I'd bread with some No, but seriously, uh... That's amazing. <laughs> it, but seriously, this is how avocados once were back in the places in North America. Well... So as you had these giant sloths and elephants roaming the plains of North America, the plants that they were eating, most of the seeds really couldn't survive. So as a result, some trees got the idea of, I'll just make the seeds in my fruit fucking huge so that the sloths and elephants can't destroy them. That'll do it. That'll do it. So... The avocado pit is, well, nowadays, nothing that is in the native range of the avocado tree, because now they grow all over the damn place. Uh, Nothing in that native range can eat, digest, and seed disperse avocado pits, because none of those animals were the target audience for avocado trees. It was these giant sloths and prehistoric elephants called gompotheres, which were some crazy looking animals. And gompotheres. No, no, I mean like would uh, glyptodonts be one of them? Because I forgot what era they lived in. I think they lived in the Miocene. Same time period. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not sure. I mean, I can see it. It's a huge ass prehistoric mammal that ate vegetation. Yeah. What about banthas? I would assume that they would be oh, somewhere so around that uh, migrating yeah, herds they were, of They were critically creatures. endangered at that point, so... <laughs> <laughs> because of all these damn people. And then, uh, stay warm. Uh, and then, so, uh, oh, as a result, a the, the was conservation... <laughs> that was now, not the bantha. No, now we lost all the Star Wars fans. <laughs> and we lost Bud because he was upset by your misquote. Oh my god, we did lose. Oh wow. Yeah, I know, right? Uh Tauntaun, that was the word. That was what I was looking for. Tauntaun. Tauntauns were the ones that Luke was stuffed in to yeah. keep warm. 
the banthas were the big bison looking creatures. Oh, the one in that in uh, Jabba the Hutt's pit. No, that was a started with an R. Re- uh, yeah, um, rag, rag, ragthor, ragnar, ran, ran, rancor. Thank you. Yeah, it was a rancor. Um, no, uh, banthas, banthas were the bison, buffalo looking herd right, creatures off, that were you call them a big and furry. I will call everything a buffalo. You're a buffalo. I'm a buffalo. Joe's a buffalo. If you got a problem with it. So basically, uh, now. Ludo from uh, the Labyrinth was a <laughs> Did you fucking kick him? What? No. I left because I know when my, my <laughs> mis- misidentifying of species is not appreciated. <laughs> DA's BC the only limited up. to Star Wars. Yes. In fact. But, you know, I will admit, like, the character design for a lot of the Star Wars lore is just fucking cool. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So, when the giant sloths and gompathirs and brontothirs and all these big-ass animals uh, kicked the bucket and were... Uh, and they became the grass, and the antelope eat the grass. Uh, when when they all died, the avocado was left with no one to disperse their uh, seeds, and so they would have gone extinct. Yeah, the avocado if it, would have gone extinct if, if it, it weren't, weren't for, for one girls. organism in particular. Tumblr girls, ah, the rare Tumblr girl, <laughs> Tumblr Isis. Avocado toastus. <laughs> Dear God. Well, actually, no. It wouldn't have. Been, it's not them. It was the Aztecs and the early civilizations that started cultivating uh, farmland in. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, in it's, central it's and like, south. Mm, this green shit. This green shit is fire. What if we put chips that, in it? This they green the shit. Avocado. This green shit that's just like the uh, the crack off. This green shit the fucking coffee. slaps. Wasn't that the crack off? The the coffee? The the one the the, the monkey that goes ahead and poops out no, coffee that that's somehow monkey. a delicacy? That was a that's Asian palm civets. That, yeah, that's civet. Civet. Okay, I'm sorry. And they're they're like cat creep. They're like kinda like cats. They are cats. They're they're felines, not monkeys. They're felines. And they're and they're They're shit. not monkeys? No. And their shit costs more than yours. Uh, clearly. <laughs> I was waiting Learning for that. All that literally shits money. Hmm. I need to invest in one. <laughs> well, I hope you like civet shit. Because you'll be sifting through a lot of it. But anywho, um, what? But yeah, so basically, with the avocado, they were supposed to go extinct. Um, ain't, uh, early ancient people kind of got a hold of them, said, "Wow, this green shit slaps," and they started eating it. They cultivated it. This green <laughs> shit slaps. They, they <laughs> ate it. They cultivated it. They passed it on. It kind of grew. It's now a thing. Tumblr girls. It's like the main diet of Tumblr girls. I don't know. I'm not a Tumblr girl. Um. And, it's all uh, them fucking millennials. You're either you're either somebody who you're either somebody who has the avocado taste like wet grass gene or the avocado shit slaps gene. Unfortunately, I am. I think wet- that's cilantro. Oh, that is cilantro. Well, to me, avocado tastes like wet grass. So I do not like avocado. Wow. Yeah, I do not like we, avocado. We we don't need that kind of negativity here. I am yeah. like the only person in the world that does not like avocado. You could have been you could have been buttery and you weren't. <sighs> Cuz like I like guacamole. I do not like I I can't eat I cannot eat anything that is, I have tried guac, I have tried avocado, like even when Lindsay puts it in her food, I'm just like, mm, yes, this is good." And I'm just like choking it down because it's avocado, but she's only done that for me like or she's only made it like once a couple years ago because everything else that Lindsay makes is like fucking and that like I fucking love Lindsay's food, except avocado. 
Oh, that being said, I'm like, sorry, Steph. I mean, we're shitting on avocado toast right now. Like, <laughs> avocado toast is actually pretty good. So, I, I will say that. That's my official it. stance on it. But, um, jumping back onto topic, so we have the avocado surviving through human means, although despite its entire reproduction system being an evolutionary anachronism. And so, um... Anachronism? Anachronism. Fuck me. So, uh, we have a couple other examples that are very similar with plants using their, um seed dispersal systems through megafauna animals in uh, North, Central, and South America, for example. The cockle burr, which is, um, if you've ever walked through the woods before and got those little burrs on you. And uh, so they don't cling very well to domestic cattle, and or even deer, for that matter. They don't cling all that well. However, on horses in particular, they cling very well and so they'll stay on there until either the fur is shed or someone picks it off. And they use that as a way of dispersing themselves nowadays. However, back when you had giant hairy animals roaming the, the plains, where all you would have to do is... And we missed up. What? All right, I completely okay. So for the next topic, we're talking about um, mastodons, but and I had to look something up really quick. But when I look something up, I put what uh, trees in New York with stinky seeds. And in, in in the people also ask the first one is what is the tree that smells like sperm? And apparently, it's a tree called the Bradford pear. Yes, they're disgusting. They're they're all over the, the rural highways out here. Did you never notice those nasty, stinky little pear looking things on the side of the road? Oh yeah, the green ones. Yeah, those are why, those are Bradford pears. Why are they? Why do they smell like sperm? I don't think they Brad, do, but they smell absolutely business, awful. Businessinsider.com: Bradford pear tree semen sex smell. What? Like, what the fuck did I come back to? And how long have you guys not been able to hear me? Ginkgo stinko. Oh, we're talking about ginkgo. All okay. right, so ginkgo. Okay, so, oh, sorry. Go ahead, bud. I'm like, I, I think I'm like talking over you. How long have you guys not been able to hear me? Because I've been talking this whole time. Why does old sperm smell like fish? What the fuck did I come back to? I'm I'm on Google because I needed to look up something for the Mastodon, <laughs> and one of the questions was why is why is old I'm fucking dying because he's talking about how long have you guys not been able to hear me? Huh? Sperm fish. <laughs> she totally, totally dis. <laughs> doesn't even hear the question. Just on her own little world, and Joe's just like. Can anyone hear me? He's calling out into a void, and it is the most comedic and tragic thing that I've ever encountered. But um, a similar dispersion method is used by the jumping chala cactus in the American Southwest, and they used to cling on to sloths and camels. And they weren't the only thing that used camels uh, in the American Southwest. Back in, let's see here, and I uh, luckily I have the proper year now while well, i was googling it while no one could hear me so uh so in 1854 the united states army uh requisitioned a group of dromedary camels in an attempt to use them to cross the american southwest because they were more efficient than horses at crossing the desert back then and so a lot of the plants that the camels were eating, horses wouldn't touch. And it's because camels had previously evolved to eat said plants. And uh, hmm. instead of the dromedary camels that were from Africa and the Middle East, 
these guys were the giant camels that used to roam North America before they all uh before they all got turned into fossils. Or as we like to say, as we like to say at my vet hospital, got transferred to Jesus. Transferred to Jesus, uh, sent to God, same day shipping. Um, <laughs> what else we also, is we there? Also call it, we also uh, call it uh, Jesus General. They got transferred to Jesus General. Jesus General. Because, you know, like, they, uh, they, you know. but. Yeah, whenever I say, oh, yeah. hey, did, uh, did Freckles go home or did he get transferred to Jesus? Jesus. That's, that's pretty dark. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. It's the weird shit we talk about behind the scenes at vet tech clinics. Fair did enough. Or did he get transferred to Jesus? Speaking of... Um... A hospital with no visiting hours. The hospital with no visiting hours. Oh, the hospital God. in the sky with no visiting hours. <laughs> the farm upstate. <laughs> the farm upstairs. I like that one. Upstate, yeah. So, um, speaking of large prehistoric animals that uh, got sent to the big old farm upstate or the big old uh, iceberg upstate, we're going to talk about the... American elephants, the mammoths, and mastodons for a moment. Because they <laughs> fucking ate everything. <gasps> but we have to talk about our lord and savior. Jeebus? No, the other lord and savior. Nigel Marvin? Mammoth cube. <laughs> mammoth cube. <laughs> mammoth cube. Mammoth cube. I fucking love What the it. hell are you talking about? Mammoth cube. So... <laughs> Is our Lord and Savior? Before I explain Mammoth Cube, before I explain Mammoth Cube, I'm just gonna send an image of Mammoth Cube nope. to the Discord chat. I'm because... already on it. Oh, I'm sending it at the moment. So am I. There it is. Ah, so here is Mammoth. Two, of them. <laughs> two Mammoth Cube is better than one Mammoth Cube. It's and I'm also gonna just chuck some. <laughs> That's no, but, what she but, said. But if we if we upload one more picture, we really could get mammoth cubed cubed. Oh my god! I I can't actually be mad at that because that's actually pretty clever. Mammoth cube, our Lord and <laughs> Savior, with his tusky up. So. And this is going to date us a little bit because this is going to be one of those memes that comes in and uh, heads out the door pretty fast. But um, as of September, hopefully we can we can only hope. How can you hey, not love I, Mammoth I hope Cube? This meme lives forever. It was a meme on paleontology Twitter uh, that suddenly popped up and oh, I remember that paleontology Twitter. Oh yeah, no, I'm absolutely it. being facetious. Paleonto everyone's on paleontology Twitter. <laughs> yes. Like uh I was oh. there just last week. Oh, of course. You I know. want this one top ten historical battles. <laughs> but um so someone I believe it it was it was some you it was a YouTuber uh who is pretty popular in the paleontology community, I think, if I'm thinking of the right person. And so on a live stream, they were discussing the um, them pulling woolly mammoths out of the permafrost. And so one of the ones they pulled out, they cut around it in a cube-like shape. And uh, <laughs> Mammoth Cube, as a meme, was born. And now it's just people inserting this square with tusk jutting out of it into various memes. For example, um, Mammoth Cube Dating Simulator, <laughs> Mammoth Cube Replacing the Elephant, oh my God. Hannibal Riding Across the Alps. Oh my um, God. And <laughs> it's, other not, things. it's not just a rock, it's a Mammoth Cube. <laughs> the Pilgrims <laughs> rock these babies for miles. <laughs> <laughs> what did I sign up for? 
Mammoth Cube. <laughs> but yeah, so Mammoth Cube, as of this um, podcast being recorded, is still a meme that's uh, pretty fucking funny at work. Anyway, so I'm uh, back onto the topic of mammoths. Uh, all hail our Lord and Savior, Mammoth Cube. And so when they weren't in cube form and mammoths were roaming North America. They happen to consume the fruit of the Osage orange, which, if you're unfamiliar, is a large green fruit that that, uh, grows in the temperate regions of North America. They are fantastic for gathering a bunch of them and throwing them at your friends because they hurt like a motherfucker. And uh, so... They're so much fun to throw at each other. Oh my god. And they also smell amazing uh, until they start rotting. Yeah. And huh. like they smell great up until like one literal second. There's like a cutoff point and then it's just bad. And uh, so these guys are way, way too big for any modern American wildlife to eat and pass on the seed properly. Deer will still eat them after they've fallen open and they'll disperse the seeds like that. However, back when mammoths and mastodons were roaming North America, these guys would just walk along, pick them up and eat them like you would a grape. And so they passed it through their system and then popped out an Osage orange tree a couple days later after in their uh, poop pile. And so... Now that the elephants are, well, in cube form and underground, the Osage Orange doesn't really have a primary seed dispersal system. Speaking of organisms relying on large mammals, there's also methods where you occasionally have to defend yourself from said large mammals, like... Cur- is currently still in North America. You have plants like the Aralia, the Devil's Walking Stick, Honey Locust, Persimmon, and Hawthorn that all have giant ass spikes growing out of them. And these giant ass spikes don't really do much anymore because the only things that are eating them are deer. And deer can easily just go in between these giant ass spikes. But if you're a large-ass elephant trying to get in and eat the leaves off of this tree instead of the fruit that the tree's intending, you're not going to have a great time. You're going to get a couple large spikes in your trunk. But wouldn't their tough skin be able to withstand it? I thought that was kind of the thing about elephants, that they're nearly impenetrable. Uh, it their is. trunks are very sensitive. Their their trunks are kind of like the tip of your nose. And they're super fucking sensitive. Hmm. And getting stabbed by tree knives, even if you have thick skin, still isn't that pleasant. Even pachyderms hmm. can get stabbed. I know, and pachyderms are just... Right, don't get me started on pachyderms. Okay, a pachyderm is an animal that has a, that has a skin about, I think it was like an Two, uh, an inch, an inch thick, but it was a, it was an inch. So you got rhinos. I mean, it is your rhinos, elephants, pigs, which are the. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, pachyderm isn't a a proper like grouping of any animals. It's just a sort of way to describe certain animals. Animals kind of a, a loose a loose uh, tapers, hippos conglomeration. Yeah, yeah. Like tapers and hippo uh, like tapers, elephants, hippos, rhinos, uh pigs. Um I'm trying to think of anything else. Because like most of those animals we just listed aren't very closely related. No, they're like, not like the but, closest relation yeah. there listed is tapers and or no. Yeah, tapirs and rhinos. Yeah. But, um... So, speaking of large-ass spikes to deter animals from eating you, in Madagascar, you have a lot of trees that have very similar giant-ass spikes on them that are present in trees in North America. 
And just like in North America, there's nothing that those spikes are effective against anymore. However, there used to be where Madagascar held giant birds and lemurs the size of gorillas that would be deterred by these large spikes. And then speaking of trees working or in a relationship with giant prehistoric lemurs, there are the Anden Adansonia baobab trees in Madagascar, which are really cool because their fruits are very similar to the Osage orange, not properly able to process by anything that's currently living on that island. However, there used to be a giant species of lemur that was able to eat and then process and then seed disperse the fruit from these trees. And then I think most people at least have some idea of what a baobab tree is. That giant ass, thick, with it's, two C's, it's the tree like Rafi it's the 12 tree Rafiki pages. Rafiki. It's the tree that Rafiki lives in. Yeah. It's a baobab tree. That thick, No thick idea. Tree. I'm working on a, it. A, it's a tree that's like thick with like three C's and then like... 12 K's and then like a couple Q's thrown in there. Sounds Russian. <laughs> yeah, but um, I got it. These species of baobab trees are well, were reliant on large prehistoric lemurs to disperse their seeds. However, now that they're uh, now that they're taking a nap underneath the island, uh, <laughs> these trees don't really have a proper dispersal system either. And uh. speaking of islands, and I think this is one of the coolest ones on our list, we're going to talk about the Komodo dragon for a little bit, which already that's just a badass topic on its own. But um, these guys are made to hunt large animals they are built strong and fast and with a bite that is able to take down large animals however if you look at what's native and was supposed to be there on the small islands off of indonesia that the komodo dragon is native to there's not any large animals there anymore except now that there are animals like buffalo and deer and goats introduce actual buffalo actual buffalo water buffalo i don't understand what she means fuck you water buffalo the only buffalo i know are the ones that you put sauce on and they are absolutely delicious oh my god mm. and they come from new york and instead of uh that other place <laughs> that's exactly. You know that uh, one you place that's idiots. not New York. I was, I was literally as soon as that picture uploaded, my my dumbass was about to say like, "All right, that's a buffalo dragon." I mean, it's a Komodo dragon. That's something for Avatar: The Last Airbender. A buffalo dragon. Buffalo dragons sound pretty cool, don't they? So, are those the ones that have wings? <laughs> buffalo dragon or? Buffalo. Uh, the buffalo down there. Yes. No, they don't. Yeah, have, they, they don't have wings. wings. Unless you made a specific cut, like that would be the wings. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a butcher, so you need a <laughs> you need a butcher's input on of like what would be the wings of a buffalo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mm. end all of you. Also, <laughs> um. But anyway, so moving on, so moving on living, to and the Komodo dragon. And extinct animals, thank you. But um, Komodo dragon. must be missing the distinction. Komodo dragons are the largest lizard on the planet. And fun fact, Komodo dragons actually used to be native a lot closer to Australia. And, really? So yeah. I thought they were strictly from India. Nope, nope. They um, they lived on. The Did they island. get into a boat? Did they have wings? Did they originally have wings? So no, that was just rafting. Uh, we'll get into that the, in another episode. Yeah, rafting. 
Raft? No, I don't think we could do an entire episode on rafting. Just like, oh, it's no, an iguana okay. on a stick. It made it to the Galapagos. Oh, fuck, it has nothing to eat. Now it swims. Essentially, hmm. yeah. I just described rafting in five seconds. Like, and then, if you rafting the last and then... episode, uh, the fucking Komodo dragon got to an island, goes, huh, there ain't no men. I can't get my D appointment. So then she just kind of, like, parthogenesis and uh, had babies. Those babies grew up. And then Made she's like, more. look at men. They may be my sons, but they're still men. And then she had her little harem, but they were her own sons. Yeah. But it's okay if and lizards. He also hates some of them. It's okay if lizards do it. If people do it, you'll get something like the Hatbergs from Spain. And then she also ate some of them because, huh. like, Komodo dragon adults will eat juveniles all the time. Oh yeah. But speaking of what Komodo dragons eat, um, they used to live on or. At least prehistoric relatives of the Komodo dragon, uh, they used to. They're actually very closely related to the largest lizard, I think, that is in the fossil record. The largest actual, actual lizard, which was Megalania, which lived on the Australian mainland oh. and hunted their, uh, their megafauna, which was kangaroos that are like eight, nine feet tall and like wombats the size of rhinoceroses. Holy shit. And all this- crazy ass shit that Megalania it was a fucking buffet like uh, right, and they had a very similar strategy to the way Komodo dragons probably do now in which they would bite the prey and then either drag it down or wait for a horrifying infection to slowly burden the animal until it's easy pickings and uh, so Komodo dragons still follow this hunting strategy of taking down large animals. And without any large animals before the introduction of invasive species by humans, they only really had small prey to survive off of. But now that due to human introduction, animals like deer and buffalo and goats are back on the island... Komodo dragons have readopted this sort of large animal hunting strategy. Meat is better so, than the menu, boys. Pretty much, yeah. They were only hunting. I I would have to assume that in the time without large prey, Komodo dragons probably had to hunt much, much smaller animals that were on the islands. But this sort of hunting strategy and this size and power, the the anarchism here is the Komodo dragon's hunting strategy and their size. The anachronism? Anachronism. Fucking hell. I don't know what River did, but now I'm the one who's fucking it up. <laughs> yes. I, I, it was like some Freaky Friday shit when she fell out of the chair. Her shit grammar got transferred into me and the proper grammar got transferred into her. Oh hell yeah, bitches. But, uh, we'll, we'll go with we'll go with that. Me fail English? That's impossible. <laughs> God damn it! But um, the anachronism is the size and the strength and this hunting strategy. And so now that the prey that is properly sized is back, it's. Still kind of an anachronism because the species that the Komodo dragons are hunting weren't native. But it's still really, really interesting. And the fact that they used to hunt some scary ass things. Giant marsupials, uh, when you get up closer to Asia, probably smaller elephants that lived on the islands that the Komodo dragons probably could and did prey upon. And um Speaking of islands with predators, we're going to jump over to an island that had no predators. Uh, and so I'm not going to try to pronounce it. It's And we've already dated ourselves for this episode. So it's that island off the coast of Africa that just got fucked by an oil tanker. Um, Tom Balakok? What? I don't know. I'm reading your, uh, your schedule. Uh... No, that's the tree. Oh, okay. That's that's the tree. <laughs> the um <laughs> 
the Zambala Kwok tree was uh, native to. All right, I'm just gonna because like. Um, I'm just gonna Google the pronunciation of this and just get it, uh, get it one go, so that way I don't have to keep looking it up. Well, you got five minutes. The, so it's the gotta island. Wrap, we got to wrap the episode up in five minutes. Mauritius, Mauritius, Mauritius the island. Uh, oh, Mauritius, yeah. Mauritius God, was Mauritius the got... home of the dodo bird. Mauritius was like the punching bag of the fucking of like like early early explorer punching bag. Like every animal that has ever like every animal that lived on Mauritius just like went extinct there. Like god damn. Mauritius got hit. If you want to see a work If you want to see a worse bird extinction, go to Guam. Oh yeah, Guam and Hawaii. Guam got fucked. Yeah. But that's yeah, just, that's well, I mean, you have you have an island where the animals can't escape and people are migrating to in droves. Of course, they're going to be pushed out. Bring in their cats. Yeah. Just a war of attrition. Just a war of attrition. Bring in cats, rats, and snakes. And uh, we should talk about any this animal that evolves sometimes. Them. Sometime. Entire species of bird that got wiped out by one cat. One singular Ugh. cat. Completely. That's a topic for another episode, but we will kind of touch on that uh, conservation aspect in a moment. So Mauritius got fucked, uh, and so we're going to talk about the dodo, which is the sort of uh, symbol of being animal. fucked up in the Holocene period. Uh, as most folks know, people showed up, started uh, murdering the dodos because... Hell, it was easy meat, and uh, you didn't really have to work all that hard for it. It was just walk out, find a uh, a giant pigeon that wasn't that uh, well, wasn't that afraid of you because it didn't evolve with predators. Just bonk it over the head, and you've got dinner. You've got a decent sized animal for dinner. Hi, welcome and- to our island, visitor. How can I help you? <laughs> what's that? What's that bat for, visitor? V- visitor. <laughs> Friend. And then the dodo wings. <laughs> but um, the the the, the 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> oh. oh, but um, and so they had a species of tree, the tambala tambalacock tree, which the you kiss your mother with that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Which very similar no, to the avocado no, dude, had a you large just seed. Your mother with that mouth. Actually, wait, no, ew. That that took a really wrong turn. I really wanted to use that. That's right, cool. son. I'm your father now. D A I am your father. I'm a little no. comfortable with this episode. I am very uncomfortable with the energy we've created in the studio today. So the dodo bird tree. Studio. I love that you use that word. So the dodo That's bird a tree. Tambala cock tree. So, very similar to the avocado, large pit. The animal that was the best at not fully digesting this pit and then passing it on and then allowed for a seed dispersal was the dodo. And when the dodos got capped, there was no one to properly move this tree and help it reproduce. And because the dodos have been extinct for over 100 years, the cruel, cruel test of time has started to wear on the Tamblacock tree. And now they are in threat of extinction. And that kind of... uh, I wanted to bring that back to conservation a little bit. And I'm pretty sure you guys have all... uh, I'm pretty sure we've at least said it before on this show about how uh, ecosystems are like houses of cards. You pull one card out and the whole thing comes tumbling down. The anachronisms of how organisms evolve alongside each other really show themselves when you take certain elements 
out of that ecosystem and out of that uh that system of organisms working with each other like the tambalak cock tree and the dodo when you take away the dodo the tree is on its it's on the fast path to extinction uh had it not been cultivated the avocado would have done the same and so a lot of these organisms that are threatened or near threatened or endangered or on their way out the door who knows how many relationships with other organisms that we don't even know about yet that once we take out those one or two organisms who knows how many who knows how many living things are going to follow right through that door because they relied on the the animal or plant that we took out of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the wolves in Yellowstone. You take out the wolves, the river changes. Exactly. Yeah. But that's and we'll with, talk about another time. Without, well. And without the wolves in Yellowstone, who knows how long it would have been before the well, I wouldn't necessarily call that an, an I wouldn't necessarily say that's focused towards the topic of our episode, more so like food webs and things like that. However, I it is kind of on the same point about you know the relationship between organisms and the removal of one causing the removal of others as well. Tree snails, like tree snails. They took, uh, tree snails went extinct back in, uh, January of 2019. And because of that, uh, because they ate the, the, um, the bacteria and the fungus off of, uh, you know, trees in Hawaii, um, that fungus is growing back and it's actually killing off the trees. Yeah. But with that... I think we should end the episode here. We'll try to end it on a bit of a happier note. Uh, DA, play us out. Huh. Um, because like, fuck, this got sad. National anthem of we were Canadian. Canada. <laughs> Does that mean we could work with Ryan Reynolds? Because I would, oh my god, the things I would do to get Ryan Reynolds on this show. Holy shit. Well, I'm, I'm not even going to get into that right now. There were things that, they were, they <laughs> were things that I would probably already do beforehand, but like, DA, that's beside the point. DA is like Ryan Reynolds if we got him off of Wish. I, uh, I don't know either because that that either feels way. hurtful. But either way, Ryan Reynolds, give us a call. All right, that is our show. Dear, uh, like Ryan Reynolds, if he is this. All right, that's our show. I'm River. That's Bud. It's Da. Our one and only. Stay new to your pets, Steph. All right. Everybody say Have a good night, y'all. Good night. Stay new to your pets. <laughs>